In this video we're going to learn how to use the tiny tape out github template to turn your designs into the ASIC files we need to manufacture the chip. If you don't already have a github account you'll need to create one. Then navigate to the template repository. The link is below. Click the fork button. This creates your own copy of the repository. As github only allows one fork if you want to create another project check our FAQ. I'm also going to rename the repository to make it clear what the project does. For open source projects, GitHub pays for cloud compute, which we can use to make the ASIC files. To turn on this capability, we have to do two important things. We have the instructions here, but I'll show you how to do it now. First, go to the Actions tab and enable Actions. Then, go to your repository setting page, Pages, and then set Build and Deploy Source to GitHub Actions. Now we're ready to adapt the template to our own project by editing the info.yaml file. For Wokwe projects, you need to change the project's Wokwe ID to match the number in your Wokwe project. For HDL projects like Verilog or Amaranth, we leave the Wokwe ID as zero and use the source file section here. That's covered in a separate video called Working with an HDL. OK, so let's set the Wokwe ID to match our project. I'll copy the last part of the project's URL and replace the zero with it. Most simple designs will fit into one tile. If you need more space, you can change the tile setting to get more space. Bigger designs cost more. If you're not sure, just start with one and see what happens. We also need to fill out this documentation. This is important for a few reasons. The first is that because everyone who orders a chip will get your design, it's nice if they can understand how to experiment with it. The second reason is that by the time the chips come back, you'll probably have forgotten how it works and you'll be glad you wrote down some instructions. You can make the documentation better by adding pictures and links to the extra documentation. You can also tag your project to make it easier to find later. If you use Discord, then put your Discord name here and when we submit the design we'll add you to a special tape out role. After filling in all the details, press the commit button. This saves your changes and starts the GitHub Actions running. You can access the results here using the Actions tab at the top. We have three actions, one for documentation that shows how your documentation will look when it's printed, another will be used for automatic testing of what we designs if you've used the truth table option, and finally we have the GDS action which is used to build the ASIC files for manufacturing. If you want to find out more about that, we have a separate video showing how it works. It's called How the GitHub Action Creates the ASIC Files. Let's take a quick look at the docs action. This is useful to see how your documentation will be formatted for the online and print datasheet. We get a PDF file we can download and check to see if the formatting and the picture works. Let's take a look at the GDS action results. We have this nice page with some warnings, utilization statistics and cell usage. If you don't understand a warning, join us on the Discord chat and post in the GitHub Actions channel. You can take a look at the cells in use by clicking these links. For example, this XNOR2 gate. Let's take a closer look at the 3D viewer. Right click to pan, left click to change the perspective. Scroll wheel to zoom in and out. On the right we can see which cells were used and how many. Above we have the controls for layer visibility. We also have some shortcut keys over here on the left. Pressing 1 hides all the filler cells, 2 hides the wiring and 3 isolates the currently selected cell. I'd really appreciate it if you took a screenshot of your design and posted it on social media with a description of what it does along with a tiny tape out hashtag. Back on the front page of the repository you'll see we have these three green lights now for the docs, test and GDS all passing. The GDS in the documentation status needs to be green to submit your design. Sometimes the GDS action will fail. A what we design should almost always work. If not, then it's probably our problem and you should let us know in the what we channel in the Discord chat server. If you're using an HDL, it's usually because of an error in your design or because your design is too large. To get more details, you can look at the logs here in the actions results or download the zipped GDS logs artifact and take a look inside. First, check the synthesis log file under runs, 
Wokwe, logs, synthesis, and then the file is one synthesis errors dot errors for design errors. If your design is too large, then the failure will normally be in the placement or routing part of the flow. You can try to reduce your design size or upgrade to a larger design by increasing the number of tiles in your info.yaml config. When you're ready to submit, go to tinytapeout.com and then scroll down to the submission section. Click the button to go to our submission app. Sign in with your GitHub account and then copy and paste the URL of your GitHub repository into the form and press submit. So that's it. Happy hacking and I look forward to seeing what you make on your ASIC.